ladies and gentlemen, to True Devotion to Mary on Member Supported Restoration Radio. I am your host, Alexander Klasik, and I am joined by our guest, Father Herman Fleece, professor at Most Holy Trinity Seminary in Brooksville, Florida. Welcome to the show, Father. Um, thank you. I'm happy to be here. In this episode, we will continue our study of the book, True Devotion to Mary by St. Louis de Montfort. We are now in part one, chapter two, entitled Fundamental Truths of Devotion to the Blessed Virgin. So the first of these truths which St. Louis presents us with is that Jesus Christ is the last end of devotion to Mary, as he is with all devotions in general. He is the Alpha and the Omega, as it were. Yes, and then um, as we saw last time, our saint makes uh, an important point of uh, putting all things straight before he he actually enters upon the, the true devotion. And here is um, that key aspect that... Uh, our Lord is the end of, of all our devotions. Uh, in fact, He is the end of all creatures because uh, He is God and just like uh, the Father and the Holy Ghost. And therefore, He is the end of all creatures. And um, so the devotion to Our Lady uh, will only have a value and um, will serve a purpose if it leads us to, you might say, Devotion to our Lord or to our Lord Himself as His uh, our end as God, the end of all creatures, and um, so I think that's the the main idea. And one should keep this in mind. That is that uh, sometimes um, people will, and we are going to probably to speak about this. That we seem not to understand. They will be uh, they are uh, surprised why. Why uh, speaking so much of Our Lady and why not so much uh, we don't speak more about Our Lord and so forth. And really the whole out- outlook is wrong because the whole reason why we, um, we esteem so much the devotion to Our Lady and we appreciate it and we try to spread it and cultivate it, etc. is precisely because we, um, we realize not only on paper... Um, by doctrine and as the Pope say, has said and what the books say, etc., theology, but also by experience of uh, ourselves and ours, that is the, the most effective way to follow our Lord, that is to keep the, the commandments of our Lord, to follow the will of our Lord, to conform our, ourselves to His will, etc. So once we, we know that, if we love our Lord uh, very much, we will want to to cultivate the devotion because we see that is what uh, leads us the, in the best way to our Lord. So far from being a, an opposition is the contrary, it's precisely because we want to ensure that we become united to our Lord, that we save our soul, that we glorify Christ, etc. And uh, many times we have had the, the sad experience of having failed, even with good intentions, in attaining that by some other means or roads or, and methods, then once we discover that through Our Lady we do it more effectively, then it is a very love for our Lord Jesus Christ that leads us to, to use His devotion. Okay? So I think that that's the way to, to approach it. There was a beautiful quote how when we give something to Our Lady, it's immediately given to God, just like in the Magnificat. Yes. The praise is given to her and she gives the right to God immediately. Yes, yes no, that, that, is, uh, that is very true. Yes, that's another, another aspect that is... Um, all that we give to our lady is she gives to uh, to God, and then yes, I think that's what he's he's stressing, and I think it, I think it's important to to keep it in mind even for our own selves. That is in our own ways, in our own uh, approach to this devotion is that that we have to keep essentially in mind that um, to avoid any scruple or anything in the in the the devotion is that. We, yes, we are going to Our Lady, and but we are doing it precisely to in order to reach our Lord. So it's, uh, and that's really how it works. And again, because it's the most effective, then that gives the the that gives great uh, great glory to our Lord because we we attain essentially the end that is, for example, to keep oneself in the state of grace. And if one has a struggle against that, in order to to keep the law of Christ and not to offend Christ by a mortal sin, he will find it much more uh, easily to do it through Our Lady. So then once he reco- uh, discovers that, then the very love to our Lord will say, well, 
I will, I try this way and it was very effective. Then I, I will, I will use it. This is, it's a, I think that is, a, uh, is the approach. And I think people who have tried devotion to Our Lady in this particular way of St. Uh, Louis, but even in, in some other ways, more general ways, and um, of devotion to her, by experience, they will tell you that, yes, I was not able to overcome this vice or this sentence for 10, 15, 20 years, and it was only devotion to Our Lady who, in some mysterious way of grace, uh, but the thing is that it was only through devotion to Our Lady that I was able to overcome it. So you see, in a way, um, in the spiritual life, just like in any, in many matters anyway, probably in most, the, you might say, the effect, the end, or the result have a key place. That this is not merely, let's say, well, some nice words or poetical ways of speaking of Our Lady, etc. If it's being more effective in avoiding sin and overcoming vice, etc., then that's really like the, the true test of our devotion. And in that, it's, it's really the best. So the next truth he presents us with is that we already belong to Jesus and Mary as their slaves, for we have already been bought with a dear price, the price of all his blood. Yes, and um, again, this is very, very uh, well put there at this point, because we were obviously redeemed by our Lord on the cross, and then also uh, we were, um, by baptism, we were uh, free from the slavery of the devil, essentially, and that obviously comes from the from the blood of our Lord, from the efficacy of of, um, of the cross and of of Calvary, and then Our Lady cooperated with our Lord in that one sacrifice of the cross. At this, she united herself, her sufferings, with the sufferings of Christ, and that uh, that offering of the divine victim to the Father. That's what saved us from. Uh, from hell, that is, we still have to uh, work out our salvation, but that's what um, that obtained the graces for us, etc. And so it is very true to say that we are slaves and we were, um, we were in the, uh, you might say, in the slavery of the devil and our Lord, and then our Lord deigned to make use of the cooperation of our Lady in the work of redemption, and we're going to see that in detail later. But Our Lady cooperated in the work of redemption. But so Our Lord and Our Lady really, um, and we belong to them, as he says, as slaves, even beyond before we start considering this particular slavery. So I think it is actually a very good insight that he puts it uh, here. That is, whether you have thought about it explicitly or not, or as we're going to consider it now in this in this work, the fact is that we we are the slave of our Lord and of our Lady for the reasons, essentially, we just mentioned. And so, going right along with that, St. Louis proposes to us that we should embrace this slavery by being loving slaves who, due to their great love, seek only to serve them for the honor of belonging to them. He puts the question to us, are men and devils to have their own voluntary slaves and Mary to have none? Is it not reasonable that among so many slaves of constraint, there should be some of love? Yes, this is a very nice, a very nice quote and a very nice uh, thought. Essentially, yes, um, I think it's an important aspect to um, see the holy slavery um, to our Lord and our Lady in that aspect. That is, we, uh, yes, we are slaves. Uh, for one thing, we are slaves of our Lord because we are His creature and we are redeemed by by Him. And then our Lady is a mother of God, so is. Um, immensely above us in, in dignity, etc. And all those are very true, and they are always, uh, um, you know, in the foundation of it. But I think it's important to uh, to go that second step and saying and trying to become uh, slaves. But as he says, of love that is to give ourselves fully, etc. But not only by a mere sense of dependence or or of um, inferiority, etc., which is certainly there, but more out of love. I think that's a key aspect because the um, essentially our Lord wants obviously our love and he's much glorified and pleased by our service through love or by love. And that is uh, 
most precious to our Lord. So there is a big difference essentially of being a slave in the first way I mentioned and one out of, of love. Even, even if the, you might say the, the, the spiritual life and our, our service in the spiritual life are more or less the same, the whole aspect of doing it out of love for our Lord or our Lady and just doing it because they are our, our Lord is our King and our Lady, our Queen, just like uh, their Majesty only, there is a big difference. Both are good and even the, the second aspect I mentioned is correct and it's actually excellent, but uh, the way of doing it out of love is much higher and much perfect. And this is also, one should say, that more effective because uh, once love makes us uh, essentially do better in the spiritual life because we are goaded not so much for by, um, by marks and uh, systems and whatnot, but by trying to do what we know that pleases our Lord. And that will change, you know, with the circumstances. So that uh, if we do uh, our, you might say, our service or, or um, slavery out of love, then it will be also more effective in keeping his, um, his law and his will. But I think the more important aspect besides being more effective is that it's more, uh, it's more pleasing to our Lord and it's in itself more perfect. I think that goes along with the idea of ridding self from our good actions, our prayers and stuff. And that, that's the third truth that he presents us with, is that we need Our Lady in order to die to ourselves. And the importance of this really can't be overstated. It's one of the first lessons when you read the spiritual combat is distrusting ourselves. And I think a lot of people would be surprised at how much of what we do we don't realize it, but it's tainted by self, a lot of what we do. Yes, and actually, yes, it's, again, it shows the solidity of, of uh, the spiritual doctrine of our saint. This is, you might say, one of the uh, basic principles of the spiritual life, that is, as you mentioned, all the books and all the, even all the schools, whatever school of spirituality there is, they will say we have a very deep um, self-love, self-love and... Uh, and uh, disorder, self-love, etc., and, and we have to struggle against it, and it's a lifelong struggle. And uh, so I think, again, that's a very, you might say, it's a key uh, aspect of the spiritual life, and one which is not only important, but quite difficult. That is, as you mentioned, our actions are, state, uh, are tainted with this self-love, etc. So the question is, how do we, well, fine, we convert and we want to get rid of it because we know it's bad and displeasing to our Lord, so, but how do we go about it? How do we obtain it? And that's obviously the big question because it's easy to want to do it, but how can we affect it? So, and I think what the saint essentially points out is that this devotion is one of its characteristics is that this goal that is an essential goal of spiritual life and everybody professes you know, loudly that they want to do and they are striving to do, is also um, most effectively obtained by devotion, but this particular devotion to Our Lady. That is, how do we manage to do it? He says, well, by the practice of this devotion, of the Holy Spirit, etc., we gradually advance in this uh, detachment of self-will, etc., etc., self-love, and again, this confirms what we were saying, that the true devotion to Our Lady is essentially a most effective, you might say, way or approach to the spiritual life that is the basic goals that we have to obtain in any approach we take to the spiritual life. This particular devotion is most effective. Here we, want, we must get rid of our own self, our self-love, etc. And that's quite difficult. And the saint is saying, well, with this devotion is much easier and uh, it's much more effective uh, to do it this way. And so it's in this part that we come across a, a bit of a curious statement. Uh, someone actually asked me this question before the idea for this series was even um, thought of. And what, what it is is that St. Louis mentions, quote, in order to rid ourselves of self, we must die to ourselves daily. That is to say, we must renounce the operations of the powers of our soul and of the senses of our body. End of quote. Now the, um, the senses of the body seems obvious, but what is meant by the powers of our souls? Yeah, that is actually a good question because 
for now, uh, for us now, it's a little more obscure, but uh, this is, means simply the uh, three things, the imagination, the intellect, and the will. We more commonly speak about the intellect and the will, but the powers of the soul include those three, imagination, intellect, and will. So, and then what the senses. So essentially, the gist of what the saint uh, means is that we, we tend to use our, our powers, our senses, even our body, etc., to uh, essentially uh, foster or to indulge in self-love, essentially, or self-will, which is more or less the same. And um, so he says, well, we must uh, die to ourselves, that is, we should employ all that we are and what we have to the glory of God and for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ, who is our end. Um, so and then that's why we must die daily, that is, we have to essentially order all of our thoughts and our senses and what we do, uh, etc., uh, to our Lord. So that in order to, to conform all, or to make uh, everything to be ordered to our Lord perfectly, we first have to die to all the disorders we, we have, essentially. And that's part of the, the struggle of the spiritual life. And uh, here he says that we must renounce the operations, etc. And obviously what he means, the same means, not that we won't uh, essentially exercise the operations, but actually we must renounce essentially the attachment to the, you might say, the self-use, that is to use it for our own selves more or less explicitly or sometimes very hiddenly and secretly, but to use it for our, for our own selves as opposed to Christ. See, he is, the, he is our God and uh, our Redeemer, and we have to use... Certainly, we have to use our intellect and our will and our powers, etc. And we should actually make the very most of them precisely because they were given to us by God. And we have to use them for Him. But you see, we have to use them for Him, not for us. And the difficulty is that we tend uh, almost unconsciously to use them, yes, and to, to like to use them, but at least tainted, if not completely turned to ourselves. So what this devotion does, and he's going to speak of this further on, is that we, we have to renounce to those, and obviously we still have them, and that's the will of God, and he wants us to use it, but we give it all to our lady. So we'll give our intellect, our will, our memory, everything that God gave us, we give to our lady, we consecrate it to her, so that by our lady and this devotion, etc., we start using those for what they were created, that is, for God and his glory, for our Lord. I think that's um, that's how it should be understood. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, it's, sometimes things seem so puzzling, but they're really simple once you get <laughs> yes. down to it. Uh, the fourth truth which St. Louis presents to us is the need of Our Lady as our mediatrix with our mediator, who is Jesus Christ. Of course, our Lord is our mediator with the Father, but are we so holy and so pure as to not need a mediator for our mediator? Let's see where you put it. Yes, I think it's a very good insight of the saint because, um, yes, as he says, uh, or as we just said that, yes, our Lord is, is our mediator before the Father, but it is true that uh, humility leads one to essentially, um, how can we say it, uh, be, I wouldn't say... Um, the world wouldn't be intimidated, but one has a sense of the uh, one's unworthiness and then the holiness of our Lord uh, as being a divine person. So our Lord wants us to have confidence, etc., with Him, and that's really what pleases Him. But on the part of our human weakness, once we realize your sins, etc., it becomes very hard to, because of our own frailty, not our Lord is, is essentially welcoming us and he he would essentially embrace us just like in the parable of the prodigal son but the question is are we going to to have the essentially the movement to go ourselves you see and that's really the difficult thing and many times in this uh, in the spiritual life we essentially we um, we shrink a little from doing that because of, of that understandable sense of, of our misery etc and uh, 
So I think that's a very good spiritual insight of, of the saint, and he puts some stress there that, yes, our Lord is our mediator, but it is a sign of humility to go to the saints also, and especially, obviously, the, the mother of our Lord, um, in order to, um, because we are unworthy, so uh, in order to use them as essentially helpers or intercessors before our Lord himself. And I think that is very wise, and that's why it's very healthy, the devotion to the saints, even the saints in general, even though they are obviously much lower, obviously, than our Lord who is God, but even than our Lady, etc., but they still have their, um, their function, that is, precisely maybe because they are in between, that is, we feel a little more um, like, perhaps, etc., with the saints, and we use them as uh, intercessor precisely you know, before our Lord and even our Lady because of the gradation of the holiness. There's God and the Mother of God and then there are saints. So I think um, that is important. As we are we so holy as not to need a mediator. That is, sometimes the heretics will have a, a, essentially a consummate pride that there is almost like the Pharisee in the parable that they approach our Lord as almost as if they uh, there were saints or something like, uh, which again, uh, sometimes the saints would do things that uh, seem more or less similar, but for one thing, they were saints, and then uh, we should be more aware of our, of our failings. So it's more, uh, it's understandable how we want to have mediators before our Lord, because we have offended him, be his God, so when we sin, we we sin essentially, uh, we offended the, the rest of the Trinity, so we have a sense of having essentially failed our Lord. And that sense is founded, unfortunately, because we, when we sin, we do, we do betray our Lord. So the question is, what do we do when we betray him? It's hard to, for our nature to essentially approach our Lord in prayer and whatever as if nothing had happened when we know we had betrayed him badly in after many graces. So our Lord will be waiting for us, but again, it's, sometimes it's just too hard for our weakness. So then we go to Our Lady, and essentially Our Lady presents herself before Our Lord, and Our Lord sees Our Lady, and He's pleased, and um, for obvious reasons, right? She, uh, she is um, this mother and so forth. So essentially, we kind of, you might say, put ourselves behind Our Lady, or really she's interceding for us. That is, we don't present ourselves because we are ashamed, but we pray or we address our Lord, or we ask for favors, etc., through our Lady. So our Lord will see her and be appeased, and He won't see our sins. Obviously, He knows them, but He will be pleased by the, by the virtues and the truth of our Lady, and then that will give us confidence on our part. And that confidence is important, actually, in the spiritual life. If we didn't use the mediators, the saints, and in particular our Lady, it is because of our frailty, it is very, very likely and almost certain in most cases that we will lack that confidence that we need for prayer. In prayer, we always hear that you have to ask, but you have to ask without uh, wavering and without, without doubting, etc. And it's true, but who will do it if one considers his own uh, misery? Then we will get um, essentially discouraged and we won't ask with that confidence. In, when we go through Our Lady, we can be bold in the good sense because we are asking it from our Lord because of the merits of our Lady or because of the love He has for her, etc. And then we can essentially ask with confidence and obtain many great graces. It's just like in the natural order, a little child will go to his mom and it's done something <laughs> to smooth everything out with yes. the uh, Yes, absolutely. absolutely, yes. And that's a very good thing. So the, our Lady, obviously, she's our mother. She's the, the mother of Christ in the physical sense. And she's our spiritual mother and all those uh, you might say, natural things as you speak about the mother are true in the spiritual life. Those aspects are, um, you might say, reflecting the spiritual life. Our lady is our spiritual mother, but she's our mother. So she will, uh, all the things that pertain to, the, uh, to, to a good mother, that is that she will have compassion for the children and she will intercede, etc. All, all of those things that we... Uh, we love in a good mother, that Our Lady does in the spiritual order. And uh, so I think that that's a very good analogy. So that brings us to our fifth and final truth, 
which is, we need Our Lady in order to preserve the graces and treasures we have received from God. Yes, this one essentially, uh, as the saint says in his book, is we have received graces from God and we essentially are in possession of them, uh, most notably sanctifying grace. But the question is, how can we keep ourselves obviously supposing the grace of God? How can we persevere, essentially, in the state of grace and in practicing virtue, etc.? Uh, even the fact of staying in the state of grace takes um, many graces and fighting against temptation, etc. is not something that once you have possessed it, you will have it without, uh, you know, without, uh, with ease and without fight. There will be fight um, on the devil so that you lose it. And even corrupted nature or, and the flesh will pull their own way and put it in danger. So uh, the sense is essentially in order not to lose all the graces we have received, and we receive many from the goodness of, of God, then we essentially give them to Our Lady, and we give essentially, according to this devotion, ourselves to Our Lady. That is, we give Our Lady not only our body, our soul, etc., as we just saw, but even the graces that, that Christ put in our souls, such as sanctifying grace, and the rest, and the virtues, and, and, and so forth. We also give those to Our Lady so that she protects us and she ensures that we don't lose them through our sin and our fault at the instigation of the devil and temptations. Um, so I think, the, and this one is important, especially for the question of maintaining oneself in the state of grace. I think that's an important aspect in the spiritual life and this devotion is very, is very effective in that because of the graces that we have. Uh, sanctifying grace is really the greatest and uh, so this devotion makes us preserve that state of grace by giving us those, um, those actual graces. Our Lady gives us those actual graces that we need to resist temptation, essentially. So I think it's a, a good point. And we can be seen also in a more general way uh, because it can be, sometimes we might not even, even know the graces we have received that um, we don't see our soul exactly. We know some things we receive by the grace of God, but many we might not even know. And, one of the good things about this devotion is that it makes it simple and we give to Our Lady everything, all the rest are there in our soul as God's system. Uh, perhaps we don't, but whatever we have received, if we have received it, we give thanks to God and we give it to Our Lady so that we don't lose it. And Our Lady will know better than we how to ensure it. We just have to have the, uh, the confidence to do that essentially um, as I said, the gift of self, right, to Our Lady. And she will then protect us, essentially, as belonging uh, to her. We, we give ourselves to her, and then she, on her turn, protects us in a special manner, and that will help us to keep ourselves in a state of grace and then to advance in the virtues we already possess. Well, that brings us to the end of our second episode. Is there anything else you'd like to add in summary before we close out our episode? Uh, no, I think we went through all the points, and... Um, I think we will be ready to resume next time. All right. Well, thank you, Father, for your time, and we'll talk to you again next time as we continue the series. No, thank you. God bless you.